It's been nearly 30 years since Marvels was first released and took the comic book world by storm. But just how good is it today? Woof woof! Hey guys, it's me Marcus aka The Mad Dog and we're back with another video. Today we're going to be reviewing Marvels which was published by Marvel. Written by Kurt Busiek and illustrated by John Romita Jr. Now I'm just playing with you, it was of course none other than Alex Ross that was on the art here. This was a four issue limited series that was released between January and April of 1994. There was then later a zero issue that came out a few months after. The mission was to create a story that looked at everyday life in a superhero universe which is something that this duo would later explore in their own creator owned series Astro City. As a result of this one book, both Basiek and Ross became huge names within the comic book industry, with Kurt going on to have a career that included writing on The Avengers, Iron Man, The Thunderbolts, and even Conan the Barbarian, whereas Ross went on to do Kingdom Come, Justice, and pretty much at least one variant cover for near enough every book that's been released since then. This book was so widely praised that he even won three Eisner Awards for the Best Publication Design, Best Painter, and Best Finite Series. In the 27 years since it was first released, this has gone on to be a fan heralded series, it's been reprinted countless times, and it even got one of, if not the biggest editions that Marvel has ever released. But now that the themes and art style isn't as groundbreaking and revolutionary as when it was first released in 1994, how well does this series hold up? This is my TLDW which stands for Too Long Didn't Watch and it's the part of the video for people who maybe don't have time to watch the full thing but you still want to know if this book's for you. Marvels is a beautifully illustrated love letter to the golden and silver age eras of comics but it forces you to look for the perspective of an everyday person. Although I can't say that this is a must read or that it's going to completely blow your mind as somebody who's reading it for the first time today, I still think that if you've got some knowledge of the characters or the storylines that were going on during these time periods then it's worth picking up and checking out. But if that's all the review that you needed thank you for checking in make sure that you give it a thumbs up and click that subscribe button so that you don't miss any videos in future and check out our sponsor organic price books there's a link in the description down below along with a discount code but if you're looking for a more thorough review let's start by taking a look at the plot Okay, so if you were wondering why all of a sudden it's gone to completely voiceover, it's because of the fact that for some reason when I was filming, my camera decided to not use the microphone that I'd brought. It decided to use the internal microphone, which sounds like this. But I have the belief that you should make a video that you're happy to put out, so because of that, I'm going to take a second stab at this. But to make it just a little bit easier, I am just going to do some voiceover for some of the bits that could probably just do without my face being in them. Anyway, where were we? Yes, the plot. Starting in 1939, we follow Phil Sheldon, a photographer for the Daily Bugle whose life has spun into a completely different direction. When Marvel, such as the Human Torch, no, not that one, the Submariner, and Captain America dominate the news in the city of New York. We then journey across the decades and see the rise of the Fantastic Four, the Avengers assemble and Spider-Man take his first swing. But the attitude towards these Marvels begins to change, not helped by the arrival of mutants that the public deem to be a threat. This leads Phil through a journey of self-discovery and reflection, questioning his very beliefs in the industry that he's made his career in. But what happens when the fallout of the battles between these Marvels impacts our daily lives? What does it mean when our own existence is put into the hands of superpowered beings that we aren't even sure if we can trust? And what do I ask when I realise that I didn't have a third question for dramatic effect? Look, it's Alex Ross, I don't really think I need to say any more. Now for real though, what can I say about Alex Ross that hasn't already been said? Although it's great seeing how realistic he can make my favourite heroes look, what impressed me more with Ross's art was how he can capture a setting and a time period. You felt like you were there in the middle of New York, even with the little details such as the street signs. That was integral for this book to get right, and Ross nailed that. However, it is clear that this was early on in Ross's career, and I'm not trying to judge too harshly, it's just I don't want to be licking his arse for this entire video. But when I compare it to something that he did later on, like justice it's clear that this doesn't have that fine level of polish and there was some backgrounds that looked rather grainy and they just had this weird cloud and you couldn't really tell what it was i know obviously that everybody was practically a chain smoker back in those days but i didn't really think it was this bad that you couldn't really see past two feet every artist develops though so i'm not judging him too harshly on this i just didn't want it to be like a love letter to alex ross and it's nice to see how far he improved in the few short years since this i do have to give him mad respect because i'm not sure how early on he started this project but to be able to do a 40 page monthly issue that's all painted 
that must have taken some work. I know this also sounds like quite a minor thing to pick out, but with a style like Ross's, it's very easy to point out the big things that he does really well. But I really loved how Ross paid attention to reflections, and I'm not just talking in the covers because it's easy enough to focus all your efforts on the one page that's going to be on the front of the book. But if you also look at like the car windows and even in Sheldon's glasses, he really paid attention to exactly what that would be like. The sense of scale was great too, and Ross actually made it feel like Galactus had an intimidating presence. I'm not trashing on Jack Kirby because obviously he's a legend, but I remember when Galactus first appeared in the Fantastic Four issues, he kind of just didn't really seem like he fit in there. It looked like somebody had added it into the scene, whereas with Ross, because of the fact that New York felt so real, when Galactus appeared, it felt like an actual threat. The use of colour is really underrated as well, and of course I'm mostly talking about that subway scene with Cyclops and the use of reds, but the way he did Silver Surface so that he had a magnetic quality to him, and the way that fire just looked real, it's just like the perfect combination of colours, and it really shows that from an earlier stage in his career, he had a full grasp on exactly how to use his talents. But like I said, it's weird when you're critiquing someone like Alex Ross because of the fact that there is clearly that high level of quality there and there's not really anybody that you can compare him to. It wouldn't feel fair to sit here and say about, oh, but Jim Lee does it this way or John Romita Jr. does it that way because Alex Ross is very much doing his own thing. I can't really think of too many other artists that are doing it that way. There's always at least one person that you can compare them to. But if you were somebody who brought this because you really love Alex Ross's art, then you are going to get more than your money's worth in this book. This is definitely an interesting read, but I can't say that it's essential. Besides the aspect of how Sheldon's career developed as a result of the Marvels, there isn't too much that you really learn here. It's more about the spectacle of it all. Sometimes it felt like I was reading something that didn't intend to be a story, but more a series of art prints from Alex Ross recreating classic Marvel scenes that somebody just happened to put word bubbles over. That probably is me downplaying it and being a bit too harsh because I did really love the stuff with the mutants and seeing how Sheldon's opinion on them changed. What this book did really do well was jump through the years is, and obviously it's got a good advantage that we know what happened during those times especially if you've got any kind of background knowledge on the silver age of marvel comics but there was never a moment where you couldn't piece together what had probably happened for sheldon during those years and it was cool seeing jameson progress for the daily bugle on a similar note it was interesting just how much from each time period could fit into one issue we never felt like it was overcrowded it knew exactly what needed to be focused on directly but what could also just be pushed to the background so yes something like galactus is going to be in the forefront revealing that mutants exist that's something that needs to be there on the page but the Kree score war and some of the spider-man stuff yeah that can just be a headline on a newspaper what i liked is that sheldon never felt forced into these key events that were already known in marvel's history sometimes it's easy to feel like a character doesn't belong where they're being placed and it's a bit revisionist similar to that issue where the sentry was the reason why iron man stopped drinking and he took rogue's virginity like i swear i didn't dream that that was an actual issue that exists it'd be interesting to see this creative duo continue with this idea into the later era of comics like could you imagine if they did like the return of Bucky as a winter soldier or even later visions of spider-man or having something like civil war happen from an everyday person's perspective would be really fascinating i do think that speaks to the strength of this concept but it is also great that busik got to explore that a little bit more in astro city This is your final spoiler warning, if you don't want anything about this book ruined, I'd recommend skipping to the final verdict timestamp down below. But admittedly, with this being a bit of a shorter story and it's more about the experience and the actual plot, there's not too much that I can really spoil. Like if you've got to this video and you've got to this point and you didn't realise that Gwen Stacy had died, then I apologise, but admittedly, that's pretty much common knowledge now. The part of the story that stuck with me the most was the bit with the mutant girl that took refuge in Sheldon's house. I'm not sure she was given a name and I've just forgotten about it, but if that's the case, I can pretty much guarantee that somebody in the comment section below will feel the need to correct me. I also respected but kind of hated the fact that they left her fate unknown and there was this note in the back of the book that said that they took her design from a random character in the background of like some comic that was from the Silver Age so it's not even like we know that she's going to come back and be a certain member of the X-Men or anything like that. And given how young she was the note that she left really just hit home to me like that was a bit that really stuck with me even after I'd finished this book. The contrast that it focused on was really interesting too and it highlighted something that's always bugged me in the X-Men because the Avengers and the Fantastic 
Fantastic Four, they're great, they are heroes, but the X-Men, mutants, whoa, that's one step too far. It's obviously it's making parallels to race relations in the 60s, which for someone who wasn't around during that time, it's always interesting to learn more about. And obviously I know that that was also part of Stanley's original intention when he was creating the X-Men, because like I said in the TLDW, this is a homage and a love letter to the golden and silver age of comics, so it makes sense that they want to try and honour what Stan Lee was doing in those original issues. Sheldon being permanently blinded as a direct result of the Submariner having a fight in the middle of New York was a really fascinating turn for the story to take. We spent so much time during comics focusing on these battles, following the heroes as they're trying to save the day, that to see it from the ground and realise that there is collateral damage actually made you think differently about other comics that I've read in the past. But Sheldon's decision to retire as a result of the death of Gwen Stacy that felt a bit forced to me. I get they had a connection with Gwen and they seemed to be becoming friends, but this was a dude that has been permanently blinded as a direct result of these marvels and I'm honestly not making a bad joke here, it just felt a bit short-sighted for Sheldon. He seemed to be a much more rational person, and I know that they tried to explain it, but it still didn't sit well with me that this is where you would draw the line after everything that he's been through. I don't know, maybe he just wanted to retire, and this was his ideal out, you know, just one too many bad days at the office, I guess. I did find it funny how the news thought that Galactus was a hoax. That really tickled me, and there's obviously clear parallels between the way that the news is presented now, and what they're trying to parody there in the book. But the last scene with the X-Men was probably Probably one of my favourites and I think it showed great development. Even though Sheldon didn't seem to have any hatred towards mutants after he'd met the refugee girl, he still could now comfortably stand next to them and it was like a passing of the torch going from the original roster into the uncanny era. This is why I think it'd be fun for this creative team to do more stories together. Like if we're being honest with ourselves, if Sheldon did actually exist, he probably would unfortunately have died by now, but just imagine if we got to see his reaction to other Spider-Men popping up like Miles Morales or Ben Riley, given that Gwen was what made him call it a day. I just think that would be pretty interesting and it is also a great compliment to this series overall that it makes me want more from this concept. This is my final verdict. And not every story needs to shock you before it can be enjoyable. Not every story needs to try and completely rewrite the superhero genre in order for it to have an impression on you. But at the same time, not every story will give you the unique experience that you will get when you read Kurt Busiek and Alex Ross's Marvels. Ironically, it's in not rewriting this genre that this book manages to succeed, as instead it allows us a rare moment to be a civilian and remember why exactly we love this genre in the first place. We're so caught up in seeing Galactus treating the galaxy like it's some kind of all-you-can-eat buffet or the X-Men defending a city that will then turn around and hate it the second that they're finished that the spectacle of the superhero is kind of lost on us. Marvels, even though it came out nearly 30 years ago, reminds us exactly what it was like when we first started reading comics. It should be pretty obvious that I wasn't reading comics during the 1930s or even the 1960s but this book gave me a chance to experience what that whimsy must have been like. And that's something that anybody that started reading comics from a young age can resonate with and has probably forgotten what it felt like. Whilst also touching on some of the wider issues such as herd mentality, celebrity worship and fear of the other which is stuff that is still relevant today. Marvels for me at least succeeded at giving me something familiar but from a new, different and fresh perspective. Although this title is rightly remembered for its art, the feelings that it invoked as I was reading it was the most important factor as I'm reviewing it now. And although it's clear that this was just the first toe dip into the pool for both Bruce Seek and Ross who then went on to do Astro City and obviously Ross's art just went from strength to strength, there's still something in Marvels that makes it timeless. And it does a better job of doing that than more modern titles despite the fact that this is set during a certain time period. I can't say that it's something that you desperately need to read or that you're doing yourself a disservice if you don't or that it's going to completely change the way that you view Marvel comics, especially for somebody who's reading it for the first time today. It's still fun and it reminds us why exactly we love superheroes in the first place. I can't really see anybody taking a major dislike into this and it's going to get a very decent score of 70%. Woof woof! So that's my review of Marvels and I'm hoping that you've enjoyed it. If you've read this book, leave what you thought about it in the comment section below. Also let me know what you think about this part voiceover, part video that I've had to do, this kind of like Frankenstein video that I've put together. Like I said, I didn't want to put out the video with awful audio so I've just filmed it twice as best that I can with the time that I've got. But if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and if you didn't, why did you get this far? Subscribe if you're new here and click that bell notification so that you never miss a video. If you want to, share this video where you can, it does really help the channel to grow. And another great way to support the channel is to check out our sponsor in the description down below, Organic Price Books. There's an affiliate link and there's also a discount code in there for you. There's also a tip jar and any donations
donations are greatly appreciated. All the money that goes to there is put back into the channel. But why not check out one of my other videos or catch up on some of my reviews. But until next time, just make sure that you stay safe, stay reading the best books that you can find, and stay mad all you dogs. Woof woof! See you the next video.